So now, without further ado, I'll introduce Michelle Campbell, who's going to talk to us about environmental management. Hi, my name is Michelle Campbell. I am a senior environmental consultant with a company called the Environmental Academy. We are based in Gateshead near Newcastle. I'm also a member of the IEMA Steering Group. That's the Institute of Environmental Management and Assessment. I've been writing environmental management systems for a long time. And I think these bullet points are the best way to describe of one. It's a tool to control, improve, manage, and monitor. We have to do all of these things with our environmental aspects and impacts. All management systems, including an environmental management system, is based off of plan, do, check, and act. This is a cycle that all businesses should try to incorporate to ensure the efficient running of them. The engine that drives plan, do, check, and act is continual improvement. Without continual improvement, this cycle would fall down. It would stop. Let's talk about the benefits of doing this, of thinking about resource efficiency, of thinking about environmental management. Well, there's three main ones that I see over the years of doing it, is profitability, ensuring compliance, and the wider corporate responsibility um, agenda that is becoming more mainstream now. So let's explore these a little bit more. Profitability or financial benefits. This first benefit is all of the resource efficiency improvements. Then if we do all of this environmental work, we're avoiding and reducing risk, but we're also improving our credentials to help win new clients and retain existing clients. Secondly, you've got the legal case. There are over 200 pieces of environmental legislation in the UK. These are just a small selection of them. And finally, let's look at the corporate responsibility. People don't want to work for a polluting employer. So they want to work for a good employer that thinks about the environment is a business objective. If we win more work because of our environmental credentials, it will increase our employees' job security. OK, let's look at some types of environmental management systems. This type was actually championed by the IEMA, well drafted and championed by the IEMA. ACORN, if you can see down there at the bottom, was a working group that developed this this standard. This standard is a British standard called Trouble 5 And this is a phased implementation for an EMS. This is good for smaller companies that may not want to take on the entire task at one time, or smaller companies that may only want certain elements of an EMS. So it is a good reference document as well. I highly recommend that you download and read this, because if you've never been exposed to EMS, this is a good how-to guide. Secondly, we also have this one called Eco Management Audit Scheme. This one is actually voluntary EU legislation. So you can download this for free from the Europa website. If you download and read it, you will find that it is very, very similar to the most popular EMS standard, 14001. But what makes it more strict is that it requires the company to publish an environmental statement on their performance. So it is the stricter big sister of BSA Trouble 5 and 14001. Local councils tend to go for this in the UK. And it's also very popular in Germany. Finally, I wanted to speak about the most popular standard, 14001. 14001 is the most recognized way to implement an EMS in the world. There are hundreds of thousands of companies that have this certification. One of the highest countries, the highest country in the world that has 
the highest number of certifications is China. Japan is number two, and the UK is number three. So it is a business culture in this country to implement an environmental management system. These are the parts of an EMS. So how do we do this with regards to an EMS? Well, let's think about plan, do, check, and act. Okay? So we want to get an overall picture. We want to walk around the site. We want to gather data. How much are we consuming and spending on energy, waste, water, materials? Then you want to look at where you can prioritize areas for action. How much is it costing you? Is it, is it a legal requirement? Is there an environmental risk there? Then you put those goals in that order. One company I work with, I mentioned earlier, electricity, their second biggest fund. So that was one of their top priorities because they needed to reduce that cost. As a company, we want to look at environmental objectives to reduce. Okay? We want to think about short-term goals first, things like an awareness campaign, things like working with your suppliers. Then you want to monitor and measure that, maybe to capture any monetary savings. Then take those monetary savings into low-cost environmental goals. Then you can get more and more benefits, so it becomes a chain reaction. Leading off from that, this slide explores that a bit more. These are things to consider. Pollution prevention measures are a good place to start because you, you should see those as the basics. We want to ensure our company does not pollute outside of the law. Good storage of chemicals. Um, spill kit training, ensuring that we have you know, the right drains in the right places, ensuring that we're not pouring anything down drains or down water courses or contaminating land. Once we have that as a standard practice, then we know we're reducing our risk of being prosecuted. You can also think about the biodiversity of the site. Do you have an area where you can enhance with native landscaping? That will always be an environmental benefit. Think about your stakeholders. Employees, communities, and regulators can maybe aid you with ideas and point you in the right direction with environmental goals. You will always have to train and develop your staff. The more your staff are aware of the environment, the more they will be able to contribute to the EMS. The same with motivation and awareness raising. Green procurement and sustainable procurement is a good way to influence and also see environmental improvements. So you can engage with your suppliers. On the right hand side, I have a word smart. While thinking about these objectives and targets to consider, remember they always must be specific, measurable, achievable, responsibility assigned, and time bound. Always put them in that smart method that's when they will be successful. Okay. Remember, we have to manage the system. And I spoke to you about the basic process of EMS. But these bullet points are some more hints and tips. Make sure you know the scope of your system and you work within the, the parameters of your scope. You must have a coordinator or somebody that's a leader of the EMS. Okay. Earlier, I mentioned going for short-term goals. That aids in confidence building and showing that the EMS is an effective thing to do. You always will have to collaborate with experts. I'm a consultant, and I talk with people more experienced than me all of the time. It's just the nature of the job. So don't be scared to do that. The same with local knowledge. Stakeholder engagement helps with that. You have to set roles and responsibilities. If that's not clear from the EMS, lack of ownership is a big weakness in a lot of people's EMS, and it eventually becomes ineffective. Okay? Training should occur throughout that whole process. There are barriers. Life doesn't exist in a vacuum, so you'll have to anticipate those barriers. But don't let that take away 
the encouragement and the confidence of the EMS. Always to have management reviews. But don't just report back to senior management. Also think about middle management, supervisors, and individuals that may have contributed on a smaller scale. This will develop your process and make a mature EMS. Okay. Never take people out of the equation. You have to engage employees. When I read EMSs and they seem to take people out of the equation, it's not a very good EMS. They, it is the sinew that keeps it together. So these bullet points give you hints and tips on how to include them in the equation. Senior buy-in all the way down to constant communication. Relevant mix of communication as well, though. Have green champions, people that you know seem keen to get involved. It's essential. So that's how an environmental management system helps with resource efficiency, looking at waste minimization, and how it just ties everything together that the previous speakers have touched on. I also said I was going to tell you about the first documented requirement of, an environment, of the environmental management system, which is the policy. The policy is the shock front of your EMS. It is a strategic, broad statement. So these bullet points here that I've given you are a good audit checklist to ensure that your policy is a good one 